Today, we will see the second part about the EE6B flight computer, since as we mentioned in the previous video, this topic was divided into two parts. In the first part, we discussed how to use the calculator side of the computer to solve different problems. In this second part, we will look at how to use the wind side of the computer to solve navigation problems related to the effect of wind, which includes the calculation of the wind correction angle. So before we get started, let's remember that the manual or physical flight computer has two sides, the calculator or front side which we talked about in detail in the previous video, and the wind or back side, which we will focus on in this video. With this being said, the wind side consists of a transparent rotating disc with the compass rose around it, which in turn is inside a fixed scale that can be moved along a background sliding grid. Now, this background grid also has two sides, one of them used for high-speed calculations, and the other one used for lower speeds. So the grid to be used will depend on the problem we are solving. With this in mind, let's look at the different reference markings that we can find in the wind side of the flight computer. One of the most important ones is the true index, which is a reference mark on the fixed scale, as we can see in this images. Other important mark is the center point, also known as grommet, which is a reference point at the center of the transparent rotating disc. And finally, there are the speed and wind correction lines, which are located on the background sliding grid, representing different speeds and wind correction angles. In this example, the transverse red lines represent the speed, and the longitudinal yellow lines represent different wind correction angles. So having already seen the most relevant parts of the wind side, let's see how to solve one of the most common wind problems in navigation, and it is, given a certain wind direction and speed, true course and true airspeed, determine the true heading and the ground speed. In other words, we have to calculate how is the aircraft going to be affected in terms of track and speed by the effect of wind. So to solve this problem, we have to follow these steps. First of all, align the wind direction with the true index. Then, adjust the grommet on the 100 knot line or any other speed reference line that we wish. Then, make a mark with a pen or a marker that represents the current wind speed measured from the reference line where the grommet is located. Then, rotate the disc to align the true course with the true index and move the background sliding grid so that the mark that we made coincides with the true airspeed. And finally, read the resulting ground speed on the grommet and the wind correction angle on the mark. Now, this may sound a bit complex and confusing, so let's look at this through an example. In this case, we have to determine the wind correction angle, true heading, and ground speed, given a wind of 260 degrees at 20 knots, a true course of 198 degrees, and a true airspeed of 130 knots. So let's do this step by step. First, we have to align the wind direction, which in this case is 260, with the true index, as we can see in this image. Once this is done, the second step is to adjust the grommet on the 100 knot line. This is accomplished by moving the background sliding grid until the 100 knot line coincides with the grommet. Then, using this line as reference, we have to make a mark that represents the current wind speed. In this case, since the wind speed is 20 knots, and we are using the 100 knot line as reference, we have to make a mark at the 120 knot line directly above the grommet, as we can see in this image. Once this mark is made, we have to rotate the disc to align the true course, which in this case is 198, with the true index. Then, we move the background sliding grid so that the mark that we made coincides with the true airspeed, which in this case is 130 knots. Finally, with this configuration, all we have to do is read the resulting ground speed on the grommet, which in this case is 119 knots, and the wind correction angle on the mark, which in this case coincides with the line of 8 degrees to the right. Here, all wind correction lines to the right of the grommet will be positive, while the ones to the left will be negative. 
With this, the wind correction angle would be plus 8 degrees. Now, with this information, we just have to take the true course and add the wind correction angle to obtain a true heading of 206 degrees. If the procedure is not clear yet, let's take a look at another example, but now, using a dynamic animation of the flight computer. For this example we will assume a wind of 290 degrees at 16 knots, a true course of 042 degrees, and a true airspeed of 170 knots. So again, based on this information we have to determine the wind correction angle, the true heading, and the ground speed. So, as mentioned earlier, the first step is to align the wind direction with the true index, which in this case is 290. Then, we move the background sliding grid to align the grommet with the 100 knot line. Then, using this line as reference, we make a mark on the transparent disk that represents the current wind speed, which in this case is 16 knots, so we make the mark on the 116 knot line directly above the grommet. Then, we turn the disk to align the true course with the true index, which in this case is 042. After doing this, we move the background sliding grid so that the mark coincides with the true airspeed, which in this case is 170 knots. Once this is done, we just read the ground speed on the grommet, which is around 175 knots, and the wind correction angle on the mark, which is on the 5 degree line to the left of the grommet, which means that it represents a wind correction angle of minus 5 degrees. And finally, with this information, we just have to add the wind correction angle to the true course to obtain the true heading of 038. And basically, this is the way to proceed with any practical wind problem using a manual or physical flight computer, so it is important to practice a lot with several problems to get familiar with this technique. Now, although other wind problems may involve the determination of other variables, the one we have just seen is the one that is used in practice in air navigation, so we will not go into detail with other kind of problems. It is also important to mention that this kind of problems can be solved not only with a flight computer, but also by means of a wind triangle, which we will explain in the next video. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.